This natural marvel has always fascinated scientists and tourists alike. With each visit recently, a team of experts conducted some research on the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is one of the most significant landmarks in the United States and the world at large. It is also known as the basement of history because it is an embodiment of rock layers, each of which dates back to a specific period since the formation of the Earth. Because of this research, a terrifying discovery was made, potentially changing what we know about the historic structure. What exactly was this discovery, and how would it affect the history of the Grand Canyon? Come along with us as we investigate what scientists just discovered at the Grand Canyon that terrifies the whole world. Number 9. The Grand Canyon is missing over a billion years worth of rocks. Since the beginning of the scientific community's modern era, this phenomenon has been a consistent cause for concern. The Grand Canyon is a rock formation that stands as evidence of history, with each layer depicting a different time period that passed on Earth. The Grand Canyon is located in the United States. The geological record of the Grand Canyon does not include certain rock layers that date back more than a billion years. How does it seem to find out that these rock layers do not exist? The term Great Unconformity has been given to describe this phenomenon. In 1869, a geologist by the name of John Wesley Powell was the first to notice the anomaly. As he floated downstream on the Colorado River, he became aware of the peculiar gap. After a number of years had passed, geologists finally had the ability to date these layers which ultimately led them to confirm the existence of the Great Unconformity. The researchers were able to deduce this after observing the proximity of rocks with ages ranging from 520 million years to rocks that dated back between 1.4 and 1.8 billion years ago. What happened to the rocks that disappeared in this particular void, which even scientists don't fully understand? The process of thermochronology uses various chemical analysis techniques to determine the amount of heat that was retained in a rock at the time it was being formed. This is accomplished in order to measure the amount of heat. The findings of this study point to the possibility that a certain series of events were responsible for the peculiar gap in the geological record. It was hypothesized that this occurrence took place at the same time as the violent breakup of the supercontinent Rodinia, which took place somewhere between 633 and 750 million years ago. The tectonic activity on Earth must have been quite active during this period of time. Number 8. Did you know that some prehistoric life forms were detected in the Grand Canyon? Alan Krill, a geologist, was on a hiking trip with his students as they moved along the Bright Angel Trail in the Grand Canyon National Park. On this trail, Krill noticed a strange rock with markings on it. It was a fallen boulder lying on the trail, and it seemed to have markings that looked like footprints. The discovery of these life forms began with a boulder that had fallen off a cliff. A curious Krill who was traveling from Norway took some pictures of these markings and forwarded them to his old friend and colleague Stephen Rowland, a paleontologist at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, where the photos were examined. The Krill discoveries were determined to be ancient fossilized artifacts. Footprints from the analysis by Roland suggested that the prints could have been 313 million years old, making the fossil track the oldest vertebrate footprint ever found in the Grand Canyon. It also proved to be the earliest evidence of vertebrate animals walking in sand dunes. It was proposed that this ancient footprint may have belonged to an amniote, which is a hard-shelled egg-laying animal. So how was the footprint preserved until it was discovered? The boulder that contained the footprint was found and these footprints were observed and scientists saw two sets of tracks visible on the boulder's surface. With all of the analysis from the study, scientists were able to locate the period when the footprints were as far back as 330 million years ago, and they estimated that the footprints were approximately half a million years old moving further into the footprint analysis. He also noticed that one of the animals was about a foot long and used a lateral sequence walk. A lateral sequence walk is when an animal moves the left rear foot, the left front followed by the right rear front, and then the right front. However, scientists are still determining if the tracks came from two separate reptilian animals or the same animal on different occasions. Roland discovered that the fossil tracks depict two different reptilian animals crossing diagonally over the spot. In any case, this discovery is significant because the Bright Angel Trail tracks show the use of lateral sequence gates very early in the history of vertebrate animals. This is a piece of information that scientists had no idea about until the discovery was made. A finder is also the first evidence that amniotes living in sand dunes predated other animals. The paleontology program manager at the Grand Canyon is one of the scientists who hold the opinion that the findings of Roland's study regarding the footprints could be deemed contentious. Mark Neville says there is a lot of disagreement in the scientific community about interpreting tracks, interpreting the age of rocks, and especially figuring out what kind of animal made these tracks. Regardless, Neville praises the find, particularly because the boulder had been in plain sight but many people hadn't noticed it. Neville says there's a lot of disagreement in the scientific community about interpreting tracks. Number 7. The Grand Canyon Caves are filled with sloth dung and mummified bats. The majority of the limestone cliffs in the canyons have caves embedded in them. The Grand Canyon as we know it holds a lot of caves in it, with the insides filled with several remains of plants and animals that give us an insight into the region's past in the days of the Ice Age. 
The caves also vary in size, as some can be so narrow that your entry position would have to be on all fours while others are wide enough to have a dance session in them. Either way, these caves have been the perfect habitat for animals such as birds, mountain goats, sloths, and sloth rats that went extinct long ago. The bones of some of these animals were found, and the bone-dry conditions create a wonderfully preserved environment. The well-preserved fossils allowed researchers access to 40,000 years of past history and to know what the world was like during the Ice Age. Scientists began to examine these marks of history, and they began with a rampart cave located at the far western end of the canyon. Scientists found several dung balls scattered among the rocks in the cave. The dung balls were found to have been produced by the pollen that floated through the area and was consumed by the animals. They also contained important clues about the plants that grew in the area. Community wood rat middens also served as tangible records of animals and plant remains left in neat piles and unaltered for hundreds of years. Several skulls have been discovered, including mummified skulls of mountain goats that have since become extinct. Birds. A member of this expedition was Steve Emsley, a professor of biology at the University of North Carolina and an authority on birds that lived during the Ice Age. During the expedition, he found some condors in the caves and was able to analyze them. The results of his analysis showed that the Grand Canyon was formed millions of years earlier than previously thought. Condors most likely consumed megafauna as a delectable treat. However, the megafauna became extinct, which may have also resulted in the bird's death. These are crucial aspects of the history of the world that led to the discovery of the Grand Canyon. Number 6. The Colorado River is about to dry up. The Colorado River, which begins its journey in the Rocky Mountains and travels approximately 1,500 miles south before reaching the Gulf of California, is one of the distinguishing features of the Grand Canyon. The Colorado River empties into the Gulf of California. The river winds its way through waterfalls, deserts, and canyons on its journey to the lush wetlands and vast delta in Mexico, where it will eventually empty into the Gulf of California. In Mexico, the vast delta is connected to the lush wetlands. Activities on the river such as kayaking, canoeing, and rafting provide tourists with unique perspectives of the Grand Canyon as the river winds its way through the national park. Ever since trout became a topic of concern in the south and southwest, the Colorado River has been running at a dangerously low level for some time now. Although the river is still able to flow normally through the Grand Canyon, visitors can still observe boaters navigating across Lake Mead in Nevada and Arizona. However, there are distinct lines in the rock walls at the lake's edge. Engineers may regard the damming and rerouting of the Colorado River as a victory. Still, environmentalists are of the opinion that it has posed nothing but a threat to the river, particularly over the course of the last 10 years. Referring to the Colorado River in the event that this occurs, there will be a negative impact on the water supply for the people of Arizona, Nevada, and even Mexico. This will be the case because these states share a border. As a direct consequence of this, environmental organizations are urging political leaders to make investments in the reorganization of the plumbing system at the Glen Canyon Dam. If the dam is outfitted with more modern technology, there will be additional space for the water to flow through. It is hoped that this will be completed quickly in order to avoid the problem becoming even more severe. In the meantime, the situation's difficulty will only increase. Because it is difficult to forecast what the future holds for the Colorado River, whitewater rafting enthusiasts who are interested in visiting the Grand Canyon should not delay their trip any longer than is absolutely necessary. Number 5. Uranium Detected in the Grand Canyon The presence of uranium in the Grand Canyon is a well-established fact, despite the fact that the idea may appear peculiar. The presence of radioactive uranium in the rocklands of the Grand Canyon is evidence that the radiation is present in the natural environment of the Grand Canyon. Uranium is a radioactive material. However, tests have demonstrated that this radiation is at a very low level, which indicates that it is perfectly safe for tourists to visit the area around the Grand Canyon because there is no threat of radiation exposure. Miners began to operate in the area as soon as the news about the radioactive material got out in the 1950s, and tons of uranium were all mined out of the area surrounding the Grand Canyon by the time the process was complete. Mines that have been abandoned can be found in a few different areas of the Grand Canyon right now. This poses a potential risk to the people who live in and around the Grand Canyon because it could affect their health. At the beginning of the 21st century, the Havasupai Tribes Reservation could be found at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. This community is widely regarded as being among those in the United States that enjoy the greatest degree of seclusion. After this incident, petitions were started to ban uranium mining in the area, with the Havasupai Tribe being the first to start the process. The Havasupai Tribe's habitat is located at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. The community expressed its concern about the uranium's potential to pollute the water in the Grand Canyon region, saying that it may become unfit for human consumption. The Yellow Wall's pollution during this time period had a detrimental impact on the surrounding area of the Grand Canyon, which was already in poor condition at the time. The Grand Canyon suffered as a result of this time period's actions. Number 4. They have a Supai tribe. There is a community known as the Havasupai tribe that has lived in the Grand Canyon for a very long time. It had been their home for at least a thousand years before it was discovered. It is the only place in the United States where mail is still delivered and picked up by mules 
despite being one of the smallest American Indian nations in the country. They lived in a wide area from Bill Williams Mountain to the Little Colorado River. Their actual living locations were up and down the Grand Canyon's vertical layers, depending on what resources they had access to. This allowed them to take advantage of the Grand Canyon's diverse ecosystem. During the fall and winter months, they cultivate various crops such as corn, beans, squash, pumpkins, and melons. There is a Supai community on the Colorado Plateau, which is situated on the same level as the rim of the canyon. After a thousand years of living in the area surrounding the Grand Canyon, the tribe did not come into contact with any European explorers until 1776, when a Spanish priest named Francisco Garces traveled to Havasu Canyon. Prior to that time, they had not seen any Europeans. In some instances, he also visited the Hopi Mesas, and the reports he produced shed light on an additional Supai community. Number 3. The Tucson Ruins About three miles west of Desert View Point, which is the region that denotes the most easternmost entrance to the Grand Canyon, one can find the Tucson Ruins. It is one of the most remarkable places that archaeologists in the state of Arizona have ever discovered. It is now used to entertain and educate tourists in the area to see the Grand Canyon. The only things that make up the tourist destination are the museum and the archaeological site. The National Parks officials believe that the ruins represent the remains of an ancient Pueblo village that is at least 800 years old. The ruins are located in a national park. The Tucson Museum can be found in close proximity to the ruins of this long-ago settlement. During the tour of the ruins, the experts believe that the structures that have been used for a variety of purposes, ranging from the construction of buildings and the housing of people to the storage of food and various tools used in the performance of a variety of religious ceremonies. The museum is home to a number of exhibits that have been thoughtfully crafted to deepen visitors' comprehension of the archaeological site and the long-lost culture to which it once belonged. Arizona Puebloans were the ones who carried out the first excavation of the ruins in Tucson in the year 1930. However, there was a need to preserve the site for a better study, which led to additional work being done on the site in the years 1948 to 1965. The Arizona Puebloans were the ones who carried out the first excavation of the ruins in Tucson in the year 1930. According to estimates provided by the historians, some form of human civilization has been present in the general region of the Grand Canyon for at least the past 12,000 years. During this time frame, there have been consistent human habitation in the region for approximately 4,000 years. However, because officials from the National Park Service have only thoroughly investigated 5% of the entire park, the only site that has been thoroughly investigated is the Tucson Ruin. As a result, it is likely that there are countless archaeological remains still existing in several areas of the canyon. Number 2. The Magadan Monster the Magadan Monster, also known as Arizona's Bigfoot, is one of the mysteries most commonly associated with the Grand Canyon. It is said to live in the Magadan Mountains. I.W. Stevens is credited with making the first public mention of the Magadan Monster in 1903. Stevens reported his encounter with an unidentified beast to the Arizona Republican newspaper and said it took place close to the Grand Canyon. Stevens provided a description of the beast, referring to it as the Wild Man of the Rocks, and stated that it had white hair on its head and a long white beard that grew down to its knees. He also said that the creature was covered in rocks. He went on to describe it, saying that the beast had a long white beard that grew down to its knees and covered its entire face. Additionally, Stevens mentioned that the beast had a screech. You probably have a mental image of a screech. It is said that the Magadan monster is a seven-foot-tall creature with a coat of hair that is either reddish or black covering its entire body, with the exception of its face, chest, feet, and hands, which do not appear to have any hair covering on them. The head of the creature is relatively square like in the eyes and is mounted deep in the skull under a large and bushy mustache. The creature's eyes are also relatively square. In a manner analogous to how the encounters with ape men are described, the upper arms of the creatures are said to be large because they hang down to their knees. It has enormous feet that leave tracks that are roughly 22 inches long. It takes enormous strides and appears to be able to adapt to any terrain it comes across. The putrid odor emanating from this creature's body has been likened by witnesses to the odor of a dead fish mingled with a skunk. This is one of the most remarkable characteristics of this creature. The vast majority of campers and hikers who have spent time in the vicinity of the Magadan Rim have stated that the Magadan monster would sneak into their campsite in the middle of the night and take control of the situation on its own. It was said to knock over tents, open bags, steal food, and throw furniture around, which is where the name Magio Monster came from. Some people claim that the stones have been thrown at them from within the forest and that they have also heard screams that sound like they were meant to be warnings. The vast majority of people have also reported hearing long whistles and knocking sounds coming from the woods. These are both unmistakable indications that ape men are communicating with one another. However, only a select few people are willing to acknowledge this explanation, despite the fact that it has been suggested on multiple occasions that the Magadan monsters are actually a local Sasquatch. Number 1. Underground Suite in Grand Canyon Caves In the midst of the Cuban Missile Crisis that occurred in 1961, 
John F. Kennedy, who was serving as President of the United States at the time, took proactive measures to ensure that the American people had a place to go in the event that bombs began to fall from the sky. These measures included the establishment of fallout shelters across the country. During his search, he discovered that the Grand Canyon was the perfect setting for his business. Kennedy made sure that there was enough food and supplies moved into the caves to support at least 2,000 people by making sure that there was enough food and supplies moved into the caves. Since the bombs never went off, the cave suite turned into a tourist attraction for people who went to the Grand Canyon to see it. The food supplies were supposed to last for at least a month, but they only lasted a few weeks. The Kenyon Caverns Motel, which is located above ground, is responsible for the upkeep and operation of the single room suite that is located 220 feet below ground. Due to the cave's naturally dry climate, JFK's emergency supplies have been preserved to the point where they are still usable and fresh after being stored there for 40 years. Because there are no rodents, insects, or other animals of any kind that live in the caverns, this room is arguably the quietest in the entirety of the United States of America as a result of the insulation provided by the stone. In addition, no cracks or crevices in the stone allow any sound to pass through. In addition, because of its remarkable history, you can rent it out for $900 a night. What do you think of the video? Please let us know in the comments area below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe and turn on the notification before leaving. Thanks for watching.